what's up geekers and we're back so we took the advice of one of our viewers who told us to go and get only Q players that's gonna be the goal is to draft players from the queue let's see what we can do let's try to make it work and if we can make it work well then guess what we are going to be the best French Canadian team the Montreal Canadiens have had in a long time so let's quickly look at the draft class right here we have no more information about and did it restart everything no it did okay it simmed the draft it skipped the draft why was the draft skipped that's weird it well, we have our draft picks, so it's like, you see, cube, this is from this year. That's weird. I don't know what just happened, ladies and gentlemen. That's really, really weird. Really, really, really weird. So, I guess we're just going to go into the resign phase. Um, and I, I don't know what happened to the draft. We're definitely going to have to... Uh, well, that's some content missing right there. Uh, but we're going to go into the resigning now, because we do have some French Canadians. We have Zachary Leroux right here, who's going to play in the Q, in the AHL, if we can get him. Drafted fourth overall this year. So we're definitely gonna put him in the, I don't know what the hell happened guys. I am really sorry about that. I really don't know what the hell happened. Like the whole system just collapsed. Um, Cause I know I was trying to record and I accidentally wasn't recording with sound, but I didn't save. I backed up and I went to click on my save file from yesterday, May 13th, cause we are the 14th today, but it didn't seem to want to catch. So we're gonna definitely just go to contracts now, sign those players, we missed that draft lottery. I'm a little disappointed. It's like I'm trying to do better for you guys, and it's like I keep on missing up. Okay, I have 33 million of cap space, and we do have no elites to sign. Okay, but we do have two top sixes to sign that are going to be uh, three top sixes that are pretty important. So we got to sign Nick Suzuki. He is asking for seven million five years. That is a burden, but you know what? We're gonna offer it. He's worth it. Kirby Doc is asking for three years at 2.9. If I can put him up to seven, seven years, 3.75 for Kirby Doc. That's actually something I'm going to be happy with because um, we can definitely keep him long term. There we go. Uh, Luckin and the two, what he's asking for. I think we're just going to qualify him, but right now we want to get Romanov, who's asking for two years at 2.425. That's fine. We'll offer him the two year deal. Uh, Josh Burke as well. We're going to offer him one year and i think that's all the valuable guys so now we're just going to quickly do rfas for these guys all on one year deals see how they produce get rid of those guys that are 26 and still on rfas that have no value i'm sorry if you're 26 years old and you still haven't hit the 80 cap mark like get out of my team i don't want you you know like look at this lucin get out of here all right schumann we're gonna qualify you and we're gonna qualify teasdale now we do have, I think, yeah, Primo up. So we have to sign Primo long term now. We want to lock him up. So we can offer him 1.025 million for eight years. Have him until he's 29 years old. He is a starter and he has a medium potential. So we're definitely going to work on him there. And now if we go into UFAs, there's not much actually coming off the docket here, which is good news in regards to the contract. So we're just going to sign Norlander, who has a potential of doing something good. We're going to re-offer a contract to Corey Perry. At one million one year and in goalies we're gonna sign ditcho and that should be it that is everything blend this you went here after i released her i said get out and you go now nah, i come back um and i think that's gonna be it i think that's solid uh 80 actually for hudon we're gonna sign hudon then yeah he's an 80 and he's asking for one year so i don't think we're going for a stanley cup push this year but we are gonna see what is available um in the free agency market I am curious, you know. All right, he is signed, 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 signed. Perfect. Everyone that I wanted signed, Litter signed. We might actually just play Litter on the top line in the AHL, depending on who we sign. We know that Cole Caulfield's coming in. Um, so definitely this is going to be the tough part. Now, we do have a lot of contracts on the books. We have some solid long-term contracts for some guys. Um, we might have to move a bit. But right now, that's the thing. We have to see what this says. Jones is available. Schwartz is available. Forsberg is available. Like, there's a lot of good availabilities, as you can see. But we have 39 contracts. 
So it's not just to sign anyone. Now we need to sign someone that could fit. We have 20 million in cap space with two big players that need to be signed next year. So I think what we're just going to do is shore up um, the other lines. Uh, sign a guy like this one year, 4.9 million. Uh, and I think that's about it. Just to make certain guys expendable. Like I said, we might have to move... Um, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to move, not Mike, we're definitely gonna have to move uh, Josh Anderson this year. Uh, I love the guy, but 81 overall at 5.5 million, it's, it's really rough. They still want Corey Perry, I know, no, we're gonna try to reunite Corey Perry and Gessler, uh see if we can get that done for one year. Maybe have them both retire together. There we go, he accepts. So I think that's gonna be it. Uh, if I go look at our contracts right now, like I said, we have some solid contracts, some long-term. So 7.5, 7. See, Anderson at 5.5, he's at an 84 now, which kind of makes me happy. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna drop it this year. So we're probably gonna keep him one more year. Tuck is at an 83 at 4.6. So it's gonna be one of those that are gonna go. Gets left on his one year. Kick at 6.7 is a steal because we do have him all the way until 26 27 and then he becomes a ufa so that's the only one i'm not too worried about suzuki here ufa ufa contracts so we'll have to see how that plays out tuck right there um see doc as well we only signed doc for all right we signed like you know we're good until 27 20 it's a long ways away to have our core uh which really makes me happy uh we do have byfield here at an 80 and caulfield at an 80 but definitely they're playing second or third line or first line minutes uh this year so we definitely have to see how that plays out 84 85 um our team's solid like to take away the fact that our team isn't solid doesn't make sense but there's gonna be some moves that we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to look at either moving tuck or anderson depending who's playing better um especially now that we have a power forward for the third line in guest life. we don't need two power forwards um and that's the key, because we don't need two power forwards on the third line. Um, and Perry's definitely going to be playing third line minutes this year. Uh, that's what it looks like. Perry's going to be playing third line minutes with Getzlaff. That's going to be a nice line. Uh, and then we're going to have to put Dano on the fourth line. as this two-way. And we're going to have to see how this pans out. Because there's a lot that we can do, right? There is a whole lot that we can do here. Uh, and it's all really all about seeing what we can do. So we are going to try to make it to the start of the season. Um, and definitely edit the lines and at least play the first 10 games. Uh, probably, actually, what I'd like to try to do is make it all the way up to the trade deadline. Stop right before the trade deadline. And then that's why I think we're going to end the video today. It's going to be a nice little 30-minute video. It's a lot shorter than last time. Uh, and then that one's going to be posted up as well. Um, so definitely going to start trying to get a regular post here. Okay, so let's see. This is the problem with these lines. Like, what, what are you doing? You know, like, since they're both at an 85, I might do this. Um like that like that like that like that i like and that doesn't does it change no it doesn't change that doesn't change okay and you see like this sniper power forward power forward sniper two-way forward power forward like you don't i like you and all but like yeah I, I want this to be a thing and you see this is the thing now like these two guys are so expendable super expendable especially with byfield and kirby doc right there like makes it very hard to to to, to justify keeping them very hard defensively we're looking at more cider and I think that's going to be the lines. Our defensive is definitely not strong. We definitely need to um, shore up the Ds. Uh, we're going to change this up. I don't want Lindgren up. I want to give that growth to Caden Primo. He is an 80 and he signed long term. So we're definitely going to have to fix that up. do our power plays and everything like he's an 82 allen like you know what we will come in here jake allen you're gonna be back up and that's gonna be the major thing we have yeah okay 
top six is, is is damn solid. Like I'm not even worried about my top six right now. So special teams, like why? Get out of here. Go take that spot. You're gonna take that spot. That is good. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, boy? Even here, I think I'm gonna take you off. I'm gonna put you. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that, that power forward line. I love it. Four man power play, like, why? Just why? Yeah, that makes sense. Penalty kill. Okay, three man PK. I like that they're giving Byfield some defensive responsibilities. I do like that a lot. It definitely makes sense for our team. In the extras, like this is four on four, right? I mean, I'm not gonna change it, but like three on three is definitely where it has to be much. Yeah, see, like you're gonna go there. You're gonna go there. You're gonna go there. Kot Kaniemi is gonna have. Cole Caulfield lined up. Suzuki's gonna have Byfield lined up. We're gonna put Cider there and Roman up there because this line here. Is gonna have Kirby Ducky. I think that, yeah, that's solid. Extra attack, we have Eggblad Suzuki, no problem. But we're actually gonna put Kel, Kimiyami, and Suzuki. Shoot out Suzuki, Getzlaff, Kakimiyami, Kakil, Tafoli. Take Getzlaff out, like, no offense, Getzlaff, you're a good guy and all, but I want my young players. To have their shots to fully the only one we're gonna keep in there. And if I go back here to start in the lineup, we have Kakeniemi centering Byfield and Caulfield. Then we have Suzuki centering to Foley and Doc. We have Getzlaff and Perry reunited with Josh Anderson. And we have Alex Tuck with Philip Deneau and Arturi Alekanen. This is a nice line too. Then defensively speaking, we have Cider with Eggblad. So I really want Cider to keep on growing. He has to grow. With Eggblad, this is a big line right there. 6'4, six, 6'4, four, six, four. that's huge. We got 6 foot Alexander Romanov with 6 1 Josh Brooks, followed up by 6 foot Corey Schoenman with 5 11 Otto Leskin. And so that's how small is pairing a D. Uh, and then right here, obviously, offensively, we got Peyton Krebs right here. Like, this is pretty funny. Like, we could actually move Peyton Krebs next year if he doesn't improve. Uh, but what we will do is just get that goalie in. And that's basically what we look like. And I think our young Q player is still in the Q. Zachary Lutter is still in the Q. So we're going to leave him there. And that's what I'm talking about. All right. Got that little French guy. We're going to put Toby up there. All right. Now we're just going to check our captains and assistants. Because this is, we did shit out all our assistants and captains. We have Phil Denner as an assistant. Tyler Toffoli gets the C for this year with Aaron Eggblad as an A. I like that. That makes sense, uh, especially because we're going to be getting rid of Anderson and Tuck uh, during the season uh, just to keep clear of cap space. Uh, this is going to be interesting, guys. Let's see how the season starts. We're still in a rebuild, technically, and it showcases really a lot with the goalies and our defense that drops off rapidly. Uh, as good as uh, Romanov is, he's only at an 80 right now. Um, you know, his partner's a 78, and then my other two Ds are in low 70s, uh, and our goalies are all in the low 80s. So, definitely have some work to do. It's our top three, uh, two lines that are really the dominant ones, and that's what we have to see is how they continue to produce as the top two uh, lines. So, right now, playing against the other prospect teams, we do pretty well. We're 5 1 and 1. Uh, kind of expected to be honest wasn't expecting us to do too bad and Tyler Toffoli is leading the team right now in points with eight uh, But let's see how close everyone is. He's seven for Suzuki seven for Anderson seven for KK Dano at six gets lot five Dak five Eklat five Tuck five Byfield four goals Lekkanen Cofield two goals two assists. So that's pretty solid 
Uh, the one thing I do want to check actually, which I didn't want to back out of there, was quickly just how did they do last year? How did Byfield and Caulfield do last year? So as you can see here, Montreal really didn't hold much. McKinnon won the Art Ross. He won the Hart. Oh my god. Carlson won the Norris. McKinnon won the Lady Bing. Kaprizov won the Calder. Kucherov won the Consmith first team. Blackwood with the Vezina. Blackwood with the William Jennings. And Jarmusen with the Bill Masterson Memorial. McCauley from the Buffalo Sabres wins the Jack Adams. The Frank J. Selk Trophy goes to Kopitar. Ted Lindsay to McKinnon and the Morris Richard to McKinnon. McKinnon did a sweep. But if we check the AHL right now, Quentin Byfield wins the John B. Solenberger Trophy. He wins the Les Cunningham Award. Willie Marshall Award goes to Kraus. He wins the Dudley Red Garrett Memorial Award. Eddie Shore, which is awarded to the best defenseman, goes to Key Clagg. He was not in our team, unfortunately. Stolars wins the Baz Bestian. Look at that. The Jack A. Butterfield goes to Borgstrom. Fred T. Hunt goes to Alex Turcut. That is impressive. Then you have Yannick Dupree Memorial for Leslie and the Harry Happ Holmes. So Quinton Byfield does have one, two, three trophies on the year in the AHL. So definitely proud of him there. Solid upkeep. Let's see now how he does in the NHL. Will it be Byfield or Caulfield that does get the award? Can Kotkaniemi lead these young guns on the first line? and made them get points. So let's zoom through this first month. Uh, we're not playing any of our major rivals, so that's not too bad. Uh, let's see what we got though. Let's see what we got. Remember, we are gonna try to draft some solid Q players if there is. Obviously, I don't wanna draft guys uh, that are way below uh, my draft area just to draft guys from the Q, uh, but we do have to be careful who we draft, how we draft. So let's take a quick look. Any Canadians in the top? Uh, we do have Sean Wright. He is from the OHL though, SHL. Lambert's from Liga, Liga. Liga, we got a Russian, we got WHL, we got Russia, we got, so Nathan Goche is uh, actually the first uh, player that we have here from the queue and he's ranked pretty low. Uh, there we go. I have to draft Kana Geeky, uh, even if it's from the WHL. This is a guy I need to try to draft uh, without a doubt. Look at his name. My channel is geeking comfortably. It's just meant to be. I wish I actually invented this guy, like I wish I was joking, but I didn't. And that's why I need this guy. Uh, I don't know what he's going to turn up to be in the NHL, but like, damn, we need Connor Geeky. Even if he only plays on our fourth line, he, he has to be on the team. We have three picks also in this year's draft, so we're pretty solid. We can definitely go for more depending on how our team does. Right now, we're three and three. We're actually going to have a better start of the season than last year. Uh, and I don't mind if we do really well because there are teams that can't, like, like Vegas and. Uh, Colorado do have some big salary cap crunches to do. They may be good this year, so the drafts, I might have a bunch of low drafts this year, but we're gonna see what we can move, what we can move up to. Nick Suzuki, once again, starting off the season strong. In his first 10 games, he has 12 points. This is phenomenal for the kid. Kotkaniemi not even wasting any time with 11 points as well, right behind him. Cole Caulfield with five goals right now. One goal behind Kotkaniemi, who's the team leader in goals. Uh, and he has nine points, which is pretty solid. Byfield following up with seven. To follow with six, Dano Tuck, Brook. See, this is the thing. When you look at a guy like Kirby Doc, like, okay, I just signed you for two years. You only have three points, man. You're on the second line. You're a top six forward. You have to show a bit more potential or you will be moved. Like, I will get rid of you. I'm not scared to do that. We're here to win games. We're not here to, to, to nurture our babies. If you're not going to perform to a certain expectancy, especially when you're on the top two lines, you're going to be demoted. And then if you still can't perform, then you're gone. So right now we're going to keep Doc on the on the line. If I see by this game that Anderson is still ahead of him in points, we're actually going to swap Anderson and Doc, and that's what's going to happen. Like it's not a, not, I'm not trying to punish you, but you, you now had ten games. In your first ten games, you couldn't match with your player. You had troubles. I, I get that. After that, we need to see some some stuff. You know, we need to see you perform. And you know, I'm not going to do like the coach in the Montreal Canadiens that every game I'm be like, oh, you didn't score fourth line oh you scored a goal first line oh you scored five goals first line oh it's four games you don't score get off the ice like i don't want to do that so that's what i'm giving him you know like he's gonna have a good 20 games in him you you're expected to perform to a certain amount and i want to see you perform like we're getting wins now we're actually right now playoff bound as a team you know the the flags in montreal are already waving the team is or everyone the fans are going oh my god stanley cup Sasala stanley cup you know uh <laughs> And, and let's see what happens. Does it sound like Stanley Cup for the Montreal Canadiens? Um, 
that's the question. We're 11, 7, and 5 right now. We are playoff bound, which is pretty decent. Kotkaniemi, 25 points on 23 games. He is showing what he could be. And Suzuki at 20 now. Caulfield still at 12 goals, leading the team. Only 16 points though. Getzlaff at 5 and goals on 16 points. Edblad with 16 points as well. That's pretty solid for these guys. Anderson at 14. Byfield drops a bit to 12, but that's quite alright. Look at this guy. 6'5, man. That is a scary guy. And Kirby Doc at 8 points in 23 games. So we're definitely going to take a look at probably switching him out with Anderson. See how that affects the. Um, outcome of the lines um, but that may be what has to be done uh, and you know what Kirby Doc it's not your fault if you haven't there we go you see that's that's what we're gonna have to do like unfortunately Kirby Doc if you want to start performing you're on a big line now this is a big boy line right there six foot five eleven six three this right here is six five six two five seven but this one right here six four six four six four that average is insane so now we really have to see you perform okay doc if, if you don't perform in the next two months i'm actually going to put you down on the fourth line and guess what trade deadline you're going to be gone like i'm not going to be able to keep you on the team I, I can't risk having someone like that uh and, and i'm i'm gonna have to rfa you when you come do just to see if someone can sign you for better or ship you and, and i don't want to i had faith in you that's why i traded for you in, at the start of the season but you have to pan out if not i'll turn you into something better all right, Robert Husilius. This guy's still being scouted right here. Sean, Shane Wright, he is a two-way forward center, elite medium. You got Brad Lambert here. You got Saren Heimel. Uh, we didn't scout Saren Heimel. Can we scout him? Yes, we can. Why wouldn't we scout certain players? Give me a break. Lambert hasn't been scouted either. Let's scout him. And Len Lemon haven't been scouted. So we didn't scout any of the top guys. Um, which really irks me and let's add oh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we're still scouting him and matthew savoy has not been scouted so let's give him a scout as well matt you're saying we tell me what matt your savoy is like uh, please let me know and right now we're still playoff and we just beat the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Stanley Cup champions of last year. And not only that, we shut them out. That is phenomenal right there. And we are looking to be doing pretty good. We are letting in a lot of goals though. We do have a high uh, goal differential, which does bother me. Uh, obviously goaltending wise is, is the reason we're not very strong. Uh, but Jake Allen comes due, his four million is gonna be up. And then we're gonna probably go and sign another four to three to four million dollar goalie and try to budget ourselves around uh, no more than eight million on our goaltenders combined. If we can do that, our team will definitely look better in the future. Um, right now, the team is struggling a bit. We're starting to lose games, uh, but we are getting points, which I'm happy. Uh, our players individually are playing well. The puck's just not always going our way. Bad bounces, and we do get a big win against the Winnipeg Jets. So 15, 13, and 9. I think we're still playoff bound. If I look there, no, we're just outside the playoff bounds. Actually, the Ottawa Senators are ahead of us. If you look here, the Avalanche are inside the playoffs. The um, Stars and the Blackhawks, and then right here, the Kings, the Sharks, the, the Golden Knights are actually out of the playoffs right now, which is huge for us because we do have their draft pick. Now, as for the points in our team, Suzuki takes back the point lead. I actually like this battle between Kotkaniemi and Suzuki battling for points. Uh, Ekblad at 28 with Kotkaniemi, Gessler 27, Anderson 26, Toffoli 24, Caulfield at 15 goals. He's still leading the team. Uh, Byfield has 17 points, so you definitely can't complain. Dano at 16, Doc at 14. He has improved a bit on the third line. Uh, and he's doing better than Tuck, so I definitely can't complain. Um, I just want to see, I might have to do this just, uh, not because I want to, just to help out our young guys a bit more. I might have to put them down. There we go. That is much better. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Now they're playing at 86s and he's playing at a 90. He's playing at 89 and they're playing at 87s. I like that a lot more. Definitely what we needed to do. Perfect. So we're definitely gonna see. Uh, that's not actually a demotion. That's just purely uh, play. You're gonna play better with this guy. Um, and let's do this month and see how it sims. Uh, definitely a plus five helps phenomenally. Um, and we are scoring points. We're still losing. Like I said, our goaltending is the issue. Like we're giving up on average four goals a game. Um, five again there. Um, three so you see like it really is an average of four like uh, um, i wasn't making that up uh, my calculations are spot on 
Um, but we do need to work on it a lot. Uh, we are getting better, uh, goaltending wise, obviously, but we are last in the league right now, I think, or almost last, which kind of makes me happy, because uh, we do want that good draft pick. So let's go see what we're looking at in the draft class. Um, Cruzelius is an elite medium. He's a playmaker, playmaker, two-way forward. Honestly, I'm not very impressed with this year's draft, um, literally for the fact that it's exactly that. A lot of elites, uh, which is fine, but it's playmakers, it's two-way forward, it's not stuff you want to use. Like, this is a two-way defense. If I can get a guy like this, that's actually not too bad. An elite, medium, two-way defenseman can definitely help out the team. Um, but that's the thing, you know? Like, right now, it's hard. You you want that, that elite player to be something that can, you can fit on your roster. I have playmakers, I have power forwards. What I really need is another elite sniper to go on the second line or a top six sniper so that's going to be able to replace Toffoli when the time comes. So this is actually going to be the last uh, game playthrough. Uh, we're going to quickly just check how everyone's doing. Suzuki's at 43 points now. Uh, the new players are definitely going to be helping them out, that's for sure. Um, Kotkin going to be at 38. Anna Gibson at 36 when he gets pushed up to the first line. Um, there we go, look at that. Toffoli at 15 points in 40, 15 goals in 49 games. He's playing pretty well. Getzlaff is, is pushing it. He wants that Stanley Cup before the end. Right here, our two rookies are doing really well uh, in regards to points-wise. If I go to rookie skaters right now, Caulfield, Byfield, Brook, and Lesson, we have a lot of rookies on the team. But if you look right here, and definitely that's what you have to take a look at. It's our plus minus is because of our goalies. But if you look at the entire league, Caulfield is leading right now. Barry Boulet, look at that. A player from the queue. That is insane. Guy is 24 years old though. Uh, so definitely can't say much about that. But Quinton Byfield 24 points. Caulfield at 28. He's leading there in goals. He's obviously not leading the league in goals. Uh, Drysaddle, look at that. Drysaddle at 66 points. This guy is on fire. McDavid at 61. These two guys together are untouchable. It is insane. So quickly, let's sim through the last month. Check the stats. And then we're gonna post it up. And then the next video is only gonna be uh, about five to six days after uh, I post this one. So we can have a chance to find out what you guys want me to do. And the what you guys want me to do is important in the trade deadline because we aren't right now really in a playoff spot. So we may have to move guys. Do I move a guy like Tuck at 5.5? I think I should, at 4.5, I think I should curb that extra cap space. But you guys let me know. And don't forget, if you're enjoying this content, drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you can be up to date on more hockey videos like this as well as all other content I will be posting as I have a few projects coming up in the following few days and beyond. So depending on when you actually watch this video, all this content might already be out or uh, about to be out. So definitely check it out. So let's keep on going, see how that's going. All right, see, and yeah, we're right at the bottom. Sabres are doing horrible too, uh, which is really surprising considering the coach got coach of the year last year. Uh, we're maybe actually really well situated. So Nick Suzuki at 55 points, that's actually a really good uh, season for this guy on the second line. Eggblad at 43, Anderson at 42, Kotkaniemi at 42. They're both playing well. Kakyan is definitely not having the, the year he had last year. I might actually switch him and Suzuki up, see if I can get that plus 5 on the second line and really boost him. Getzlaff, Kakyan at 37 points, 22 goals though. Uh, 37 points for Byfield as well. The, the rookies are catching up. I like that. Perry's playing really well. See, Kirby Doc is still struggling though at 18 points. Uh, but he is playing better than Tuck, so I'm not going to complain. We're going to keep uh, Kirby for now uh, on the second line. Or third line, sorry, actually, because Josh Anderson moved up. So let's just quickly see. We're going to put probably Suzuki up to the first line and see how that plays out. I think that's going to be better right now because Suzuki is just playing well. Kakanemi needs to get the development a bit more. He is a year younger, and I think playing with the two younger guys and really not make this line as small and this line as well, it evens it out nicely. This line is a big line. Kirby, I just need you to really pick up the pace, my man. Uh, you might have to be moved uh in the off season i don't want to do that like your best potential is on the first line but i don't know if that's where i'm going to put you right now you're not playing like you deserve it um and that's the problem these guys are just doing phenomenal no reds i have a red there that's the problem it's to foley on the red here uh, i don't think i have anyone that can make that it's the only plus three is the best i can do so we're not going to switch to foley up but we're definitely going to get rid of talk, And that's the problem. And then here, this is looking really good as well. Okay, let's check quickly the standings 
in the league how is montreal sitting check the the tr the, the the drafts and end the video on no 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 what the hell did i not press advanced day did i press advanced day all right let's uh i'm really mad right now so we're gonna <laughs> that's not what i wanted to do um yeah so we're, we're just gonna skip it then because I, I wanted your opinion so no trades this year i accidentally clicked sim to next game that's why i am so mad right now i am so freaking mad right now i was rushing i was rushing and i i i made a mistake the quality of these videos are gonna get better guys i promise i promise you oh, that's painful though to watch that's a bad mistake so no moves to the rosters no moves to the trades i just want to see how our team was doing so let's just see montreal is right there okay let's see in the entire nhl yeah see we're not that low we're actually doing pretty good um carolina hurricanes anaheim new york vegas still didn't make the playoffs though but they're 20 so they're not gonna be part of the lottery um right because they're on the bottom one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen they are in the bottom lottery that's good um colorado is definitely making it this year that's not even a question <laughs> look at the colorado avalanche that is insane good on you guys oof look at those lines look at those lines holy smokes hey seriously they must be so happy with jonathan join okay they have bowen byram scratched i think we might pick him up next year I think we might pick Bowen Byram up. Let's quickly. I can't view his. Can I view his potential? No, I can't view his potential. All right, now that's gonna be that, guys. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry about that. I wanted to give you guys a chance to tell me what to do. So, what we're gonna do is next season we're gonna finish off the season and do the draft. So, quickly, I'm gonna show you guys the draft class. You tell me if you guys want me to trade for anybody. If does anybody have to pick us specifically? If I'm staying with only getting those those QHL players. Um, you have to let me know. So, there's only one QHL right now in the top 10. Um, if he stayed there. There he is. He's right there. And he he's 9th out of 10. So, that's really bad. Um, after that, there really is no Q guy at all. So, I might not be doing a Q player draft this round. Uh, like we did last round. But, uh, you let me know. If I have to trade someone, uh, definitely will look at trading a guy. Uh, trading drafts maybe go until next year's draft you know um, next year is 2023 so you do have the young prospect uh, coming in which is Connor Bedard so that could be interesting uh, but until then guys I'm gonna leave it like this thank you for stopping by it's always fun to have you guys and have a good night good morning a good day depending when you're watching this video uh, and we'll see you in a couple of days let me know what I should do on the draft as the season comes to an end and thank you for stopping by